Hey everybody, David Griffin here with HP Tuners. Today we're going to be talking about everything power sports with a particular focus on our in-house 22 Polaris Pro R. We're going to be talking about the functionality of these machines and then also some tips and tricks with our VCM suite. Let's do it. So since this is a 2022 Polaris Pro R, which is Polaris's newest, latest and greatest machine, it actually has a new ECU in it, which is an MG1 ECU. So the MG1 ECU actually needs physically unlocked by us for you to be able to do any calibration or diagnostics on it. So the fir first step before actually hooking up to the machine and doing the read is actually pulling the ECU out. So for the unlock process, be sure to check out our YouTube channel. We have a video on there that shows you the step-by-step -step removal process, how to place your order online and, and where to ship it to. So the first step in the tuning and or diagnostic process is hooking to the machine. So to hook to the machine, you're going to need an adapter cable. And depending on which machine you're hooking to is gonna determine which adapter cable you need. So we have a Polaris adapter cable for Polaris machines and a BRP adapter cable for BRP machines. So this could include CDU, Can-Am, et cetera. So on the Polaris side, the adapter or the diagnostic port is typically on the newer machines right under the steering wheel here. And on some of the older machines, it could be under the little cubby here, or it could even be under the hood on the firewall. For this particular machine, it's under the steering wheel. So we're gonna get out our Polaris adapter cable here. The reason we need an adapter cable is because the diagnostic port on these power sports machines is not OBD2. So the adapter cable hooks into the diagnostic port of these machines and allows us to hook our MPVI3 device into it and connect up to these machines that have a different diagnostic port. And then we are ready to hook up to our laptop and get started. Okay. So now that we are hooked to the machine, the next step is to open up VCM editor, key on, and we're going to read the file out of the vehicle. So first we're gonna hit gather vehicle info. You're gonna see the VIN pop up and in the vehicle information. Then it's gonna say read entire, so that's what we're gonna choose. Choose read. So this is a 22 year model MG1 machine. MG1 is the ECU that's in the machine. This is actually a virtual read. So you can see the note here. It says the tune file you've just been supplied is a stock file because the control module is not readable. So we're actually supplying you with the stock file from our library, our server for this machine. Folder is going to open. We're going to name the file. And there's our stock read. So at this point, we're ready to get to the tuning process. Now that we have our vehicle read and we've got the stock file up here, I kind of want to go over some of the really basic tuning stuff. And for, for people that have been calibrating vehicles for, let's just say you've been wor uh, working on GM vehicles for 15 or 20 years, when you open up one of these files, you're going to notice it actually looks very similar to, say, tuning a uh, Corvette. Everything's kind of laid out the same. You have your basic spark tab, which has your base spark table, main spark table. You know, on a GM, it would be a high octane. So if you look through here, you're going to see it's just like working on anything else. There's really nothing special about these machines. They just have smaller engines. Some of them are naturally aspirated. Some of them are turbocharged. So this Pro R that we have open here, is a naturally aspirated four cylinder. You can see here we have torque management tab, got our engine protection, torque management, load limiting, component protection, driver demand tables, which most of the newer vehicles have nowadays. Um, one thing to note is we have on some Polaris's, you can see the Pro R doesn't have it, but let's look at this. 
to, let's see, 2021 Pro XP actually has an extended data stream OS patch. So what this does is if you don't apply this operating system patch for the extended data stream, when you go to data log the vehicle, you're only gonna have SAE pits. So what this extended data stream does is allows all the direct memory reads, DMRs to come up. So it lets you log all the things that you really need to see for that machine, which would be like the knock sensors, your command and an actual boost, things like that. So all BRP machines have that. So if you're working on a BR, BRP machine or a CDU, CDU, CAN-AM, et cetera, you're gonna need to apply the extended data stream. This is easy for, to forget. I always try to remember to do that first thing the first time I flash it. And then I usually label the file extended data stream applied. So for Polaris, it's just some of the, the newer machines with the actual VM B2 strategies, I believe. Yeah, so this is a VM B2 strategy. So not all of them have that for Polaris, but some do. We also have a patch for re-disable. So the Polaris machines that don't have the virtual reads, you can actually go in and apply a re-disable patch, operating system patch. So that makes it so somebody else can't hook up to the machine and read your file out. So for the guys that put in all the time on developing their calibrations, getting EOs, et cetera, you don't want somebody to read that out and tamper with it. So that's an important note that I think is important to know right before you even get started. We have a conventional BE table, just like for GM Dodge vehicle, right? Depending on the vehicle, of course. But you can see we have manifold absolute pressure versus engine speed and volumetric efficiency. So works just like anything else that you'd be working on that's on a road vehicle. What is neat is, let me show you an example here. Let's say we installed a turbocharger on this four cylinder, naturally aspirated four cylinder Pro R. You can actually go in and adjust your manifold absolute pressure axes here on the VE table. So that way you can read into boost. Um, this is just atmospheric up to 105 KPA, just past atm atmospheric pressure. But if you're gonna add boost to the vehicle, you're gonna need to adjust this. So what I like to do is I'll go to and compare it to a turbocharged factory players machine and I'll move that axis over, which I think they go up to 250 something KPA, 256 maybe. So I'll move that over there, over there and start with that, which is extremely helpful than trying to make it from scratch. Um, so you can see here, if you hover, hover over the actual primary VE table, it'll tell you down here at the bottom how high you can go in percentage, which is 1536. And if you wanna see how high you can go on KPA here, let's just type in 999. So yeah, 256 is the hard limit of the ECU for um, KPA. Just a lot of other basics in here. Obviously there's no transmission, this is CVT, but it does have some torque limits for the CVT, like belt protection. So the most common failure when you start turning these things up or running them really hard at the racetrack is belt failure. So there's torque limits there for that. And then you have one of the common first steps is your speed limiter. Most people will turn that up. You can see this is speed limited to about 85, but these things are actually capable of going over in stock form, they can clip 100 miles per hour. So this is where you would raise that speedo. And then with that, you have your engine speed limiter. So fuel cutoff, you can see you have your engine speed limiters here. So 86.50 is the speed limit, engine speed limit. So you can raise that as well. And then some more basic stuff, fan settings. That's pretty popular on any of these machines is people adjust the fan settings, have the fan come on earlier to keep the engine cool. And then 
there's really, I'm not going to go through every tab, but you can see it's laid out just like tuning an on the road vehicle. So a Ford Mustang, Chevy truck, whatever it may be. They're laid out pretty much the same. So if you have been calibrating on the road vehicle, on road vehicles for a while, don't be nervous about jumping into one of these. So I don't know exactly how many parameters are in this pro R, but I know for like a can AM X three, there's only 325 parameters total. So it's not that, not that much compared to a, let's just say a 2018 Mustang would have 5,000 or so parameters. So don't get intimidated, jump in, just start calibrating it just like you would any other vehicle, air fuel spark, right? Just keep with the basics and it'll perform. So we typically see, I don't consider myself an expert on these. I haven't been doing it for years like some of the guys out there, but it's pretty easy to crank up one of these turbocharged machines and get 20 to 30 horsepower in stock form. These naturally aspirated ones usually see around 10, sometimes if you're lucky, 15. But yeah, our tools, the way we lay things out, we just make it so easy for you as a user. Uh, organize it. Same goes for the scanner. So let's let's take a look at the VCM scanner while we're in here and hooked up. I brought I went ahead and brought up a, a log that I have from another machine, not this particular machine. But this is a 2020 Polaris Razor XP Turbo. So you can see here we have knock and spark section that I have set up in my charts here. We have boost, wastegate duty cycle. You can see right here when we scroll through, here's my dyno pool. You can see commanding 35 um, and we're actually getting 32, 226 KPA. So everything over here on the left is my channel list. You can see we have a lot of stuff mapped out for you to data log on these machines, which is great. But pretty simple. There's really not too much to it. It's actually quite a bit simpler than, than calibrating some of the vehicles out there that we've, we've been known to support. All right, now that we've gone through and showed you the basics of VCM Suite and these off-road machines, I wanted to share with you some tips and tricks that are pretty important to a lot of people when working on these machines that some people or not everybody will realize that we have these options in here. You can overlook them easily. So the first one would be re-disable. So for those of you that have spent a lot of time working on your calibrations and making them perfect, and you want to protect your intellectual property, we have what we call a re-disable operating system patch. So when I pull it up here under the OS tab, this one's already applied to this file, but it's gonna say not applied if, if it's a new file that you're working on. Applying this file or this re-disable patch and writing entire will make it so somebody else can't come up to the machine and read your file out. This is really important to a lot of people in the industry. Another OS patch that I wanna share that is important is the extended data stream patch. This allows you to data log more than SAE PIDs. So it, applying this patch will bring up the DMRs or direct memory reads. It'll let you log all the really important stuff like the knock sensors, the boost control, things like that that you really need to see on some of these more complex machines. So if you don't apply this extended data stream, you may not be able to data log everything that you need to in VCM scanner. All BRP machines, Can-Am, CDUs, they all have extended data stream patch in their file. So any BRP machine you're working on, it's important to go ahead and apply the extended data stream patch. I usually do it right away. When I read the stock file out, make my first changes, I apply the extended data stream patch, save the file, and I put a little note in there that lets me know that I applied that. This is for all, BR, all BRP, like I mentioned, and it also some Polaris. So the Polaris machines, like the 2020, 2021 XP turbos, some of these with a VMP, 
BMB2 operating system numbers do have extended data stream patches. So it's very few and far between on the Polaris machines, but there are a couple. So if you hook up to a newer Polaris machine and you notice that you can't data log everything you want to see, go back to the OS tab in VCM editor and see if there's an extended data stream patch. All right, so another tip and trick when working on these power sports vehicles that I'd like to share with you is turbocharging a naturally aspirated machine. So an example, a good example would be in a common one. Let's just talk about an XP1000. So an XP1000 has a naturally aspirated engine in it and you put a turbocharger on it. Where do you start, right? So you're gonna need to change the map sensor most of the time. So you can see here under Airflow General, I have the map sensor characteristics pulled up. So this is your map slope, your sensor offset. These are important things to change when you change the map sensor. So it's pretty, my suggestion is it's pretty easy is to compare to a factory turbocharged machine. So we wanna compare this XP1000 to a turbo XP. So you can see, I have them compared here and you can just scroll back and forth and move that map sensor data over if you're gonna swap the map sensor from one of those machines, which is probably the easiest thing to do. And then same thing for your main VE table, right? The Y axis here for map and KPA only goes to 120. So you're gonna exceed that most likely. So the easiest thing in my opinion to do is move your data over and your axes over from the turbocharged vehicle's calibration. Pretty simple, some clicks back and forth. Move the data over. And that's gonna be a much better start than trying to do it from scratch. Once you do that, I mean, you're gonna be ready to data log with VCM scanner, start looking at your fuel trims, start dialing in your VE map, and off, off to the races. All right, so another tip and trick that I wanted to share with everyone is farm mode. So farm mode is in some Polaris vehicles. This example I have pulled up here is actually a Bobcat UV34 2022. So Polaris, owns Bobcat or Bobcat is a Polaris company. So a Bobcat UV34 is basically a Polaris general that is stripped down for like farm or construction use. So farm mode is a switch that actually prevents you from raising the speed limiter past a certain point. So you can see here on my screen, I have it pulled up under speedo and limiter. We have the speed limit table here and you can see 35 miles per hour is the max speed limit. So if you raise this to say 65 miles per hour, it's actually not gonna get there. It's gonna get nowhere close. So what we found through our R&D is that there's a switch in here called farm mode. So if you disable this calibration switch, that'll then allow you to go to the highest speed that that vehicle's capable of. So I found with this Bobcat is we could actually clip 65 miles per hour is about where we stopped. So, if you want to get the most out of the vehicle's potential, this is something that we found and we added through our R&D and hopefully it'll help you out as well. So another vehicle that we found had farm mode is the RZR200. So the RZR200 is typically like a starter race vehicle for kids. So if your child is about to the stage to transition into the next machine, but maybe they're not quite ready, you can turn off farm mode and get another 10 miles per hour of speed possibly out of that machine. So that allow them to use that machine longer and get more use out of it before jumping up to the next, next bigger vehicle. Thanks for tuning in with us on the basics of tuning these power sports vehicles. Make sure you stay in tune with our social media and YouTube channel and keep a lookout for new supported vehicles that we have coming for power sports.